Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies coming at you with a video that I have been very excited to bring you for a couple of weeks. Games Workshop very kindly sent me out the uh, first wave of new Astra Militarum that have been released after that initial Katie Stance box set. Um, and I've got my grubby little paws on the beautiful Rogel Dorn Battle Tank. It is an absolute beast of a tank. And I'm going to show you guys in today's video how to get it from plastic gray on sprues to on the tabletop using a couple of quick to easy to follow techniques. Before I get into the video, I just wanna say a huge thank you to all my current patrons. Without you guys, I wouldn't be able to continue doing what I am doing. And if anyone is interested in joining my Patreon, there's links to that below. Some benefits you get for becoming a member of my Patreon are our private Discord server, where you'll be able to talk to me and over 137 other people um, about cool hobby projects and other bits and pieces. Another great reason to join the Patreon is you get an extra video a week being a Patreon member. That means 52 extra videos a year. This week's video was how to paint the Bayard's Revenge uh, collector's model from the Black Templars. So very cool video. Okay, guys, let's get into the video. So these are all the bits and pieces for the Rogel Dorn tank. As you see, I've broken up the tank as much as possible. And um, some of the parts were sprayed silver. Some of them are sprayed gray sea that we're going to get contrasted later on. The majority of it was painted black or sprayed black in order to do the stippling technique that we'll be doing across the green hull tank. If you notice, this tank doesn't have a bottom, which is a very bizarre thing. I don't know what it is, but that's just the way they designed it. I looked on the sprue just to make sure I hadn't forgotten a giant floor panel anywhere, but I had not. So we're going to be doing the same technique we did for my Sons of Horus tank and piece, bits and pieces like that. That had like three stages of stippled color, going from dark to light, giving you a beautiful mottled effect across the hull of a tank, giving you real depth. It's, it's beautiful. So the first thing you want to do is start with Castellian Green. A really nice dark rich natural green color works great for that kind of camouflaged khaki color of uh, imperial guard tanks now as you start to apply it you start to think that this isn't looking kind of that well some people might be thinking about clicking off the video already trust me stick around at the end you will be surprised by the results that i achieve by doing this technique all it does is take a little practice i'm using the artist opus series d dry brushes there's a bunch of other uh, brushes out there you can use uh, army painter ones have a selection and the green stuff will do some now but they're that kind of short uh, round stiff bristled dry brush i'm sure you could do it with a normal dry brush if uh, you were careful enough but you get to be kind of sloppy with the one here you can see the uh, technique doing its thing leaving a little bit of the black behind and giving you this beautiful green as you can see it's not going down into recesses it's not it's still keeping the, the armor panel quite defined and there's no brush strokes because we're not going in a back and forth motion. You're not worried about these big flat panels having strokes all over them, which is a big thing to be worried about with, uh, with painting tanks. I remember back in the day sitting in games workshop and people would be there with, you know, a medium layer brush or standard brush. It was called back then holding a rhino and trying to paint red up and down each panel. And it was an absolute nightmare trying to get those smooth coats. So with this technique, just go across all the green bits that you want on the tank. I have this, both turrets, the sponsons, and the main hull of the tank. So you may not see parts of these for the rest of the video, um, as I'm going to be focusing on each step on the hull. Just know that as I'm going along, each step is going to be done to all of the different parts. So we're going to jump up to the next color now, which is going to be Wa Flesh. This works kind of like that whole triad thing. It's base coat, medium, and highlight color and we're basically going to be doing the same thing just a little bit lighter just building up that variation in tone and color and by the end of this is like i don't know six steps on the whole all together um, not all the same some are just like little chipping bits and some are little dry brushes with silver and weathering and stuff like that but as you go along on each layer it just starts to add so like by the end of the painting job the depth of color on the hull is really 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 cool like so far i know we're early into 2023 but so far this is the thing i'm the most proud of painting in 2023 and i'm very curious to see how long it will take for something to push it off its pedestal i have a feeling it will be there for quite some time I also got another one of these tanks to paint it for my Krieg army. We won't talk about that now. So continue the job, stippling on. 
There are some nooks and crannies that are a little bit tighter. For that, I just went to a smaller version of the same brush and did the same thing. So Lauren Forest was then the final green paint added to the hull. You can see me getting lighter and lighter as the layers go on. All those panels are still super well defined. The black spray is still there. Just make sure you don't miss any of the uh, parts of the tank. It will be noticeable as you go through it. Just take your time and enjoy it. I'm gonna say like stippling this color over the tank. I think what well, would have taken less than five minutes if that to dry brush to stipple each color on so you're talking about 15 minutes into the job and the green is on the entire tank the way you want it to be on the tank i don't know anything that would do it faster apart from like an airbrush next we're going to go for lead belcher and we're going to start blocking in all of the metallic parts of the tank so i have a large uh, base coat brush here it's the narrow point on one end and it's kind of like a flat sided brush and um, whatever brush you're comfortable with to get in at, i'm like using this because it's quite large so it means i can get the things like the tracks done very quickly um you can even get in at the side of the tracks because basically when you turn the brush sideways it gets very like gets a really nice point and we can just run it along the side of the tracks that doesn't however mean that i can use this thing to paint all of the metallics obviously some parts are going to get too small and if i tried to go at it with this i would hit them and ruin it so uh, eventually i'll have to go down to a smaller brush and paint things like the toe rings and um there's like fuel uh, caps and other bits of any other details you want to be metallic um the antenna on the the turret um, and other pieces i do manage to blast block in the metallics and the barrels with a big brush before i have to switch over which is a nice thing this isn't actually the turret or the cannons that i decided to finish up the video with um I did decide to switch to the main cannon and uh, take that to 100% completion to show you guys what it would look like. It's just bigger, more imposing, looks really cool. Has a coaxial auto cannon as well. So I decided to go for that. Here I am with the smaller brush, just getting in at those other small bits that we talked about. I accidentally glued in the melt guns into the hole here. I was supposed to have the entire tank be completely interchangeable, but somehow I jerked building and I just didn't think about it and glued them in. I don't even really like tanks like this having melty guns. I would have preferred the uh, pair of heavy stubbers, but oh well, live and learn. So they will get some metallic paint applied to them as well. Things like the insides of the hatches. And by the time you have your hands on this tank, there will be like 360s of it up on the Games Workshop website that you can reference. They obviously weren't up just yet for me, so I just had the box. Um, so there was lots of like breakdown images on the side of the box on the front of the box that I was using to figure out where all the metallics were supposed to go. So I just kind of copied along with that. After that, we're going to jump over to Black Templar and we're just going to use this to block in any other details you don't think should be green. So for instance, the exhaust stack covers, I decided to do them in black, mainly because I didn't get a solid coat of green on them because I thought they were supposed to be a different color but on the box they were the green so if you're doing it you can stipple the green on and then you won't have to do this step but i quite like the idea of breaking up the color a little bit so black templar all over those any of the soft seals around all the guns so those bits where that gun will have a little bit of kind of up and down left and right motion um there's like a, a kind of like a rubber thing around it so I just black templar that in and a few other bits and pieces you'll notice around the tank uh, the bottom parts of the antenna array on the hull on the turret again I like to just break that up and not just have it be this solid block of silver. Okay, so here's all the metallics and all the black and all the green ready to go. You can already see the depth in the green. Hopefully you guys can see it too. The different cannons. Sponsons, turret, and the other bits and pieces. These are the main parts of the tank. I'm actually not a huge fan of sponsons myself. I don't think they look well on a tank. I think they kind of ruin the lines of a tank. And um, so any Lehman Russ I build from here on in will never have sponsons. The last kind of four Lehman Russ that I built don't have sponsons. And um, although I'm painting up the sponsons alongside this for showcases, I actually didn't glue them on in the end. This is the beautiful new Astro Militar Transfer sheet. It is stunning. This may be the first time you're seeing it because it hasn't been shown anywhere. 
I don't know why they don't show these off when they do reveals because they're like my jaw dropped when I opened the box and saw this. So I used it to its full effect. I think I applied 17 transfers to the tank. Was it overboard? Maybe. Do I love it? Absolutely. So yeah, apply transfers now before I start the weathering of the tank. So obviously the transfers and stuff like that will be getting weathered along with the, uh, the uh, actual paint job. So this is the time when you apply transfers. Anyone who applies transfers at the end of a paint job is insane. Unless they have these completely beautifully pristine tanks, which some people do. So first of all, we're going to do a quick dry brush of Lead Belcher all over the tracks just to get a bit of definition and then actually all over the hull. This is super light. All you're trying to do is catch the edges, any raised areas uh, and any, it'll catch rivets really easily. Like you can brush the brush across the flat part of the hull and it will not transfer any silver to the flat parts. And then as soon as it hits a rivet or something, it's going to give this nice little effect. So as you can see, I can be quite aggressive with the brush. And like I said, the silver isn't transferring to the green flat parts. But everything else is getting this really nice little bit of trim. I'll flip over to the other side of the tank now in a second to show you the kind of like before and after. So there is the after. I know it seems quite subtle, but there it is before and you can obviously clearly see missing all the highlighted silvery bits. After that we're going to do a little bit of chip damage, just a small bit. We're going to use our sponge and we're going to do the stippling sponge technique. So it's getting a ripped bit of sponge and you're just going to use two colors. You're going to use black and silver and all you're going to do is stab at the tank with a little bit of black paint on the sponge you're trying to wipe the majority of it off um, so there's only a little bit left on the sponge and then as you can see it's just giving you those little chips little flakes of paint missing and that's more to do with that bit I said at the start about the depth of paint the depth of the scheme I love military war vehicles looking like they're in a war they are not supposed to be clean freshly painted perfect vehicles after that we're just going to jump over to iron and steel and do the exact same thing just a little bit lighter but basically it's the exact same effect just a little light silver stipple or sponge same basic idea And with that applied, that's going to be the end of the, the the paint for the hull. Like that is the finished hull. This is what the tank will look like before you put all the optional bits on it. Having said that, those track guards that are over the track there are optional pieces. You don't have to stick them on if you don't want to. I just think it's insane if you don't. They look so good. So you could close up the hatches there, stick in the front gun and just call it a day. If you don't want to do any of the extra bits, you don't have to. Like even putting the crew on, you can close up all the hatches. These are all extra optional pieces i'm not going to go through the how to paint them all this is them i added contrast like i do to everything if you want to know how i painted the crew just look at my cadian video a link will pop over the top of the screen here cadian infantry i did the exact same thing step for step to paint these guys these were all my normal contrast method with gray sear on then just red contrast black contrast brown contrast for wooden boxes you know agros dunes for any of the sandy parts and then i just went through put all the base coats on, wash them all, and then layer them up like normal. So this is what the crew looks like. Nothing amazing, but nice quick job. All the different parts painted up, quick and easy, and then applied to the tank. So the tank goes from looking really nice to looking finished. So many people skip the extra bits of these kind of kits. A lot of work has been put into those extra bits and it really does make all the difference to the look and finished feel of a tank. There's a few extra details in the tank that I didn't show you in the video. There's all the little lights. All I did was put white paint and some uh, Nasdaq yellow on there or the view slits that were there. Where it's once again white paint with a bit of ultramarine blue contrast to get the kind of white vision slits on the side. And that's it. There's no craziness here. It's so achievable. Everyone can have a tank like this in their collection. And I hope a lot of you decide to do it. I absolutely love this thing. Okay guys, and there we have it. One Rogel Dorn battle tank painted up and ready for the tabletop. I personally am delighted with how this tank turned out. I love the depth in the paintwork with all the different stages. I don't think anything I did here is unachievable to any level of painter. So I hope this will encourage you guys to get your hands on one of these tanks and get it on the battlefield. 
Thanks for watching the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you give it a like. If for some crazy reason you're not already subscribed to the channel, it mean the world to me if you took two seconds out of your day and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help me grow this channel to even crazier heights, like I said at the beginning, there's links to things like my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video and a big thank you to Games Workshop for sending out these kits. I'll see you in the next video.